Hello everyone, Michelle here from the Creative Cove. Thanks for joining me today. I thought we'd do a little pencil crayon drawing tutorial today. I haven't done uh, pencil crayons for a while and I was recently doodling and uh, came up with some cute little images with some mice and some mushrooms. So I thought we would do one of these today and they're really fun to draw. They're just on scrap paper. Uh, here's one with a two mice investigating some mushrooms. I thought that was kind of cute. So we're going to be using, well I'm going to be using Prismacolor pencils. So uh, after I finished sketching these I did bundle them up in a pack to remember what colors I did use in this palette. And I think we'll do this little guy today. And uh, like I said these are Prismacolor pencils. So they come uh, in packs of, you can get all kinds of different um, uh, color scheme packs or you can buy the whole thing at the whole like 64 colors or something they are pretty expensive pencil crayons as far as pencil crayons go uh, because they are good quality pencil crayon so they have a good pigment pigmentation in them uh, they are long lasting and they have a I guess a high wax content uh, so the blending is really nice in these. Uh, they're my favorite. They've always been my go-to for um, drawing. So that's what we're going to use today. And as I go along, I'll try and remember to tell you what colors I'm using. I'm pretty bad for remembering to do those sorts of things. Um, and I'll be sipping tea throughout because I feel like I'm getting a little bit of a cold. I don't know. It's summertime and I get a cold. I uh, haven't figured that one out yet, but... I'm not feeling too hot. So today is my day off and I've been filming a few videos so my fingers are a little messy with the paint uh, from the last video I just filmed. So I'm trying to, trying to get a bunch of things done today on my day off. But you will hear me sipping tea occasionally. So let's uh, let's draw this guy. I think it'll be, he'll be fun to draw. Now my camera is pretty low because I'm trying to do uh, the detail here. I'm just going to check every now and then make sure that I am in frame so this is illustration paper um, I know that it's discontinued now this is all the scraps I have left this is a Cougar DT and then there's a code uh, 2026 um, but it's a, like if you go to artist a fine art store they'll have rows and rows of different kinds of papers and the cougar paper has always been my favorite, but this specific one was discontinued uh, probably two years ago now. Uh, what I like about this paper is the way it handles pencil crayons. But again, depending on the kind of pencil crayons you're using, that will also r change the kind of layout it has on the paper. So you do wanna kind of experiment with different papers and different pencil crayons until you find something you really like. Uh, so I'm going to draw this guy. I think I'll put him back in frame for a second. I have to keep checking. See, my frame is way over here. Wow, I'm way off. It'll be way over here. I'm going to roll this way a bit. Okay, sorry. I think I put my camera in the mount opposite of what I usually do. Okay, this is where I'm going to be drawing. Just checking with my hand. Okay, I think we're in business. So I'm going to start with a sketch of the mushroom. So I have shown how to do mushrooms before, but we'll we'll do it again. So we got a little bit of a frowny face here going. And I'm trying to draw light, which is why my camera is so close cuz I'm I don't I want to erase some of these pencil lines after. And then I got a little line that runs from the side here, so I get a little curve on the end. And then I'm going to underneath that draw some lines coming down and then a wiggly line going back up so kind of like a oh, I don't know what shape that would be just a two lines coming down underneath the mushroom is basically what we're drawing and then the stem of the mushroom underneath that I'm gonna put some circles in here kind of broken circles just to indicate some texture on the mushroom. I mean, this isn't what they really look like. This is kind of just a fun indication of the uh, texture of these mushrooms. And then we're gonna put the mouse on. So to draw the mouse, I kind of sketch him sitting on there first. So I do his back 
I kind of do a little bit on his bum here. And I want to make sure I get the face right. So I'm going to give him an ear. He got nice big ears so they can hear us coming. And then he's got a bit of a forehead. And then he's got his round little nose, those little twitchy noses they have. A little cheek. And again, I'll be sketching this and adjusting it as I go. See if it needs to be bigger or smaller. I'm gonna pull his ear out a little bit more. And then I figure out where his eye goes. So he's got a bit of a chin here that starts back this way and then a big eye. Nice big eye. And then a little mark around that eye. I just want to make sure his forehead lines up with where his eye would be. Oh, and I have an eraser. I'm just using a, a, a cheapy dollar store HB pencil to draw this and a hard eraser. So I'm just going to soften that line a little bit. He looked pretty angry. So I want to make sure that his forehead is in the right place. His nose isn't too long. I feel that that might be a little bit too long, so I'm going to take a little off. And then bring his mouth down. His little cheek. And then his chest. Be a little indication of the other ear back here. And then I'm going to give him a little bit more of a neck and then a back. So you can see I'm constantly sketching, feeling it out. I'm gonna bring down his front leg here and he's got these really long toes. And really skinny feet. And then another foot up here on top of the mushroom behind. So not too, too much detail because I want to do that with the pencil crayon. I just want my reference points and make sure I've got what looks like a mouse. And then I'm going to give him a tail that runs down the mushroom. You can curl his tail around the mushroom, whatever you want to do. Okay, I think that's good. I think I've got him. Um, he's a little bit smaller than this one, but that's okay. I think I want to change his ear a little bit. Clean up those outside lines. Just bring his ear maybe a little bit different shape. Not quite so round. Drop his forehead just a wee bit. course you can use stamps and color in you just want to use a fine line on your stamp you don't want to have a dark well I mean if you're going for the coloring book look you can have a dark line but if you want a soft pencil blend then you want a fine line on the outside but there's all kinds of different ways to use these pencil crayons but today that's how we're going to use them Maybe his forehead's just a little too sharp. Just soften it here. Okay, so we want to get rid of the mushroom that we can't see now that he's sitting on. So we'll erase those lines. Maybe put another bump in here now that we know he's not sitting on that. And we can have fun coloring him in now. Okay, so what I like to do, I like to start with the mushroom. So I'm going to start with this red poppy color and I'm just going to put a soft layer in. So with pencil crayons, especially high quality pencil crayons, it's all about layering and putting in the color step by step. So I am not a pencil crayon art, like artist or professional by any means. I just like to play with them. I like to color with them. 
I like to try and improve my skills with more and more practice. Uh, there are some amazing artists out there who have mastered the art of pencil crayons and do some fantastic artwork. Realistic, super realistic, um, color blending, abstract work, all kinds of fantastic stuff. Sorry, I was just erasing some of the darker lines there. I don't want them in my pencil crayons. Because once the pencil crayon goes over top, you can't erase the line. So I just wanted to clean up a few and lighten a few more. So yeah, the pencil crayons take a significant amount of practice because it's all about the pressure that you use. So you have to kind of control your hand in a way that you can gauge the pressure of the pencil crayon. So some days I find I can pencil crayon color in and do all that no problem. And then other days my hand just won't cooperate. It's kind of interesting really. So as I'm coloring, just like anything, even when we do our quickie sketches, I'm always paying attention to the direction of things. So for instance, this mushroom is growing towards me and away from me, and I make sure that I color in that direction as well. So a soft coat of that, and then I will go into a yellow here. So there's all kinds of ways of of approaching this. You can start with your lightest colors and then move to your darker colors. I'm kind of all over the place. So this is a jazz, jasmine. Yeah, jasmine. And I'm just putting in a soft layer of yellow in here. And you can see it's starting to blend and it creates a kind of a smooth surface. And again, this is just a light coloring. I'm not putting a lot of pressure on here. I'm just putting a little pressure on here. And the reason I'm adding this yellow is to remind me that I want this part of the mushroom to be kind of the brightest spot. Like the light is hitting this the most in this area. Otherwise I might forget. Then I'm going to move into the orange. So this is an orange. And I'm going to start building up some orange color. Even though I want this mushroom red. I am layering several other colors with it. So it's not just a solid, flat, boring red. It's got some values and some color changes in there that create depth and interest. So a nice thin coat of that. And then I've got my red, which needs sharpening. This one is uh, raspberry. So what, usually I have a sharpener. But I don't know where I put it, so I brought my X-Acto knife out. Now that I think about it, it might be in my pencil case. Bear with me. You think I'd be organized? This is my pencil case, but there it is. Haha. -ha. So just an array, uh, just a sharpener. I'm just gonna sharpen it off to the side here. I'm notorious for losing my sharpeners because I never put them back where they're supposed to go. <laughs> so one of the things I do recommend is always having sharp pencils. Um, you can sharpen them with a with an X-Acto knife and get some really no nice notches to color with, or you can just use the round sharpener like I have there. So I'm just going to give it a little coat of this raspberry. I'm going to go around, I'm not going right up to the mouse because the hair of the mouse is going to come down over top of the mushroom. So you can draw all those details in. That's what a lot of these um, artists do with their uh, pencil crayons when they're serious. They, uh, they put as much detail into the drawing as possible. But I'm not going for super realism here. I'm just playing. And I like to just relax and do this. I don't want too many expectations. I mean, I'm filming a video, so I guess I'd, I want an expectation on this. <laughs> but when I'm doing this by myself and I'm just enjoying it or I'm doodling at night, watching TV, I don't put a lot of pressure on myself. Either it works out or it doesn't. And so right in here, I'm adding a little bit of pressure because I want a little bit of a shadow casted underneath these bumps. 
And what that does is kind of shows that this sits on top of the mushroom. So I'll do one here, for example. So a little bit of a shadow underneath and that probably even get darker in a second. So just building up, there was one here we put in. So I'm gonna put that in there. And I'm, I am drawing and coloring a little bit faster than I normally would, just so this video isn't hours and hours long. But I have had several viewers to tell me to just take my time at it. <laughs> Maybe I'm rushing too much. It's hard though, there's a lot of pressure when you're filming, especially when you can't edit. I look back at some videos and think, why did I say that? That's not true. <laughs> I can't edit it. <laughs> so yeah, there's a lot of added pressure when you're filming. So I, I tend to want to rush so then I make sure I get everything done and I don't lose my audience because my videos are too long. But the general feedback is that they prefer it if I take my, you guys prefer it if I take my time and you can always fast forward the parts, right? Makes sense. I do that as well when I watch the people I follow. I fast forward the stuff I, I can either figure out for myself or that are slow and repetitive. Okay, so you can see there's some form starting to build on this mushroom now, just by adding these colors. And I don't want to put all my details in my mushroom, I want to start on my mouse, because like I said, his hair, hopefully he's in frame, his hair comes down into the mushroom. So I'm going to start with the brown, and this is a, sorry, no, I want to start with the, this is a 20% French gray. So the Prismacolor pencils, I'm just going to sharpen this, have uh, grays. Uh, they have ranges of grays, which is really fun. They have different grays, and then they have a different percentage. And uh, you can really have a lot of fun with these grays. So that's a bit funky. Let's try that again. And just have a nice edge on there. So I'm going to give him a soft coat. I'm going to erase some of the pencil lines just with it meets the mushroom. So if I want a, a brighter spot in there, it doesn't get too dark. And one thing to bear in mind too is you try not to wipe your hands across it. I do it all the time, but there is dust to these and not as much as a normal pencil crayon, but there is, uh, it can be pretty messy. So you do want to make sure you're careful when you're when you're wiping your pencil crayons away. You want to blow it away. And uh, and also if you're working on a big project and your hand is sitting in there, you want to put a, a piece of paper down there to protect the smudging because you can you can smudge this pretty easy. Let's erase this a little bit just to clean up the line. <sighs> So I'm just going to bring that gray down. And what I like about this gray is it kind of helps me build up the shading where, where I'm going to put in the color as opposed to using a pencil, if that makes sense. So I'm, I'm looking at the way his hair grows and where the shading will be. I hope he's in frame here, where the shading will be. So sorry if you hear some funky noises. It's my washing machine and dryer. So I'm just going to put that in his ear and then along here is going to be darker. And I do want to erase the pencil crayon in here. <sighs> okay, so I put a little bit of that. Now I'm going to go into my, my brown and this is a light umber and again needs sharpening, sorry. There we go, give that a quick sharpen. And I'm going to bring his hair down now. I'm just going to scribble it down and again constantly paying attention to how his hair grows. So just think if you were going to pat this little guy which direction your hand would run in and how his fur would fold underneath your hand. And that kind of helps you gauge where the, the um, 
the direction in which it's growing. So it's always growing away, right? And then also he has muscles in here. So he's got limbs, he's got a neck, he's got muscles on his back. So those are the kinds of things to you, you kind of need to look at on your reference photo as to where the fur direction might shift a little to create this form over his back. So he's got a little bit of fat tucked in here because he's squished sitting. So that forces his hair up a little bit like this and then out. So if you can capture those kind of details and note that in your drawings, then it adds to the, the uh, realism. And I'm just gonna darken up a little bit underneath his ear. And then I'm gonna come under to his face now and down his arm. And I just slowly build it up. <sighs> so one thing I wanna do is his eye. I like to do their eyes right away, just because it helps me gauge whether or not I've got everything in the right spot. Because it's easy to realize after the fact that you maybe have it in the wrong spot or it's too big or too small. Sorry, so I'm using black and I'm just gonna outline his eye. And then I'm going to just put a little bit of black in. And then I'm going to put a little bit of black lines just a little under his eye. A little on top. And that just kind of helps me gauge whether or not I do have him in the right spot. So after doing that, I feel like I need to make his ear just a touch bigger. Okay, so now I'm going to take that brown. And I'm going to finish the eye off. So I like to leave a little bit of white in there. And I just colored over it. So I might have to add it with a pen after. Because it's, it's just a very small detail part. And it's easy to overdo. So now I'm going to go around his eye with the brown. So if you do color over the white, you can always add white back in with the Posca marker. Um, gel pens and stuff won't sit on these pencil crayons because they are waxy. So very little actually will go over top of these pencil crayons, which is another thing to bear in mind if you're doing like a mixed media. So he's got this little spot here that's his, where his little whiskers are. That's, so it's a little bit darker in here. And then it comes out a little over here. And I just keep building up. So I want this cheek to be in front, so I'm building up his neck behind and darkening that. And that will show up in the in your reference photo. I'm just putting a little bit of these colors in his ears. And I'm just, again, building up these shapes and forms of his body by putting in darker spots. So I'm tucking in underneath his belly here because this leg sits in front. So this will be a little bit lighter. There's his foot. He's got some hair that comes down his leg. And then his chest in here. Okay, so just a question of slowly taking your time building up. And that's one of the things I love about pencil crayons is it really makes you slow down. So while I have this color, I'm going to throw it in my mushroom. Even though the mushroom base is probably kind of gray in reality, I like to kind of keep my color palettes uniform. So uh, I try to introduce the colors throughout so you'll see later I'm going to add this orange into the mushroom even though there is no orange down there I just think it kind of creates a little harmony in the in the artwork again just throwing some brown following the contour of the mushroom and as I move over to this side it starts going this way 
I love these little sketches in journals. I think they add so much charm to a, a journal. And again, this is a, a lot of work. So if you want to photocopy your drawings and reuse them over and over again, I would recommend it because then you get quite a lot of use out of them. And then if you have Procreate, you can even upload and and play and manipulate them even further. So lots of fun there. Um, so the greens I'm not going to need because we're not gonna do the ferns. Here's some grays. So this one is a nice gray. It's a 70% cool gray. Uh, so I'm gonna throw a little bit of gray in my mushroom. And you can see it blends with the brown and creates a whole different color. And it's just a nice light touch. I'm not burnishing anything. I'm not pushing really hard on anything. That will come later if I want to do that. Maybe I keep it nice and soft. But that's the beauty of these Prismacolors. Is, well, the Prismacolors and the paper. So you have to find a paper that can handle being covered over and over again without breaking down. So you have to really experiment with paper as well as the pencil crayons. But you can layer several colors on top before the paper says, yeah, you're done. You can't you can't put any more color on me. I can't I can't absorb any more. <laughs> so I'm gonna put some of this gray in his ear. I'm gonna put a little gray in his face. Again, introducing these colors throughout. A little gray in his legs, a little gray in his butt. A little gray in his tail. fur around here. I'm not seeing the red that I used. The the brown, I mean. Did I uh it must maybe it slipped out of my pile. There should be a kind of like a burnt sienna or sienna color. So sorry, bear with me here for a second. I'm just gonna dig and see if I can find one. This is my pencil crayon collection this one. Burnt ochre, that will do. Sharpen this one up. I want a bit of a red tone in his fur. So I like to use a couple of browns. So this I've used the dark brown, the light umber, sorry, and now I'm going to use this uh, burnt ochre. And I like kind of the, this one's a bit more orangey, but I want to warm him up a bit. So I'm going to just gonna throw a light coat right now in there. <sighs> Oops, I'm gonna put a light coat of warm brown in him. And then we'll start putting in some darker colors and really pulling out some details. Okay, I'll put a little bit of that in the mushroom too, I think. Just a little. Okay, so now we've got kind of like a nice base to work with for colors. So let's maybe put some detail in. I'm gonna go back to this um, cool grain. I'm gonna push a little bit harder now. So I'm gonna push on some of the spots I want to go a little darker. Underneath the mushroom cap. I'm gonna put a little bit of this gray to pop the shading a little bit more under these spots. And just pushing in and draw the detail of that one. This one over here. Maybe some shading going around here and a little underneath. So you can see it's all about layers. And mostly the pressure I'm using on these pencil crayons. This is where you, your own kind of unique feel and 
style of drawing will come into play is how you hold the pencil and how you pressure, how you put that pressure to it will really kind of help determine how you draw and how you color in these things. So now I'm putting a little bit of pressure in. I'm putting it underneath his foot here because I'm gonna go back over with the red in a minute. And I want a little indication of some shading from the mouse to the mushroom. So a little bit in here as well. So he's casting a bit of a shadow on this mushroom. And again, under here. Just a little bit more. And down the bottom here, because it curves under. Put a little bit in there. And you can also, you can draw in lines, you can light pressure in circles and soften the pencil crayon. Let's put a little bit of darker gray and push a little bit harder now in some of these darker sections. So behind his ear, underneath his chin here, behind his leg. A couple of muscles in his back here. And a little bit back here. Underneath his chin. Okay, and then we'll go to the brown. I'm gonna sharpen this one again. I'm gonna have that nice sharp edge to play with. And now I'm gonna put in some more darker brown. Maybe a, a, another layer of dark brown over him completely. Okay, now I want to put some detail in with the black. So I'm going to sketch out some parts that I want pulled out. So the little parts inside his ear, a little bit behind here, a little bit here on his nose, a little detail of where his nose actually sits, some Finding lines around his body. A little bit darker in here. And I'm really going to darken the shadow in here. So I'm not doing a straight line because, again, his hair is sitting there. So I want a broken line. bit behind his tail. I'm doing little lines this time because I want to indicate that it's it's fur. So a little bit more detail now. We've got tons of detail. A little more fur detail in here. And again this is all about controlling the pencil crayon. Controlling the lines that you draw, the length of the line, as well as the pressure that you're using. And that will really just come with practice. And if you don't want to draw your image at first, use, use the coloring book and practice putting shading in those, in those drawings. I'm going to have this uh, guy on Etsy. I think I'll have all three of them available. Uh, is blanks so they're just a sketch that you can probably uh, that you can color in yourself if you want to uh, just so you have somewhere to start because I do like to try and offer that on my Etsy store if I've done a video on it I like to at least give you somewhere to start so they'll be just outlines and then you can color them in so when you go to print them they'll be very light it won't be your printer it's just light drawing so that it doesn't interfere too much with your 
coloring in. And practice, have, have some fun practicing with the fur, the mushroom. But I do try to encourage people to draw their own. And don't get me wrong, the Etsy store does really help support the channel and allows me to keep filming, but I do want you to draw your own, and uh, you know, take the lesson and go for it because it really is rewarding when you do something and you're, you're really proud of yourself for it. And you gotta start somewhere. So don't be, I get a lot of people nervous or intimidated but we all start somewhere. And if you don't put the pressure of making a perfect masterpiece on yourself every time you pick up the pencil, you'll be amazed at what you can accomplish when you don't have that kind of pressure. And I have to remind myself of that occasionally too. So I'm just putting a little shading around the mushroom here at the bottom. And now I want to pop it with some bright red. I want to bring that mushroom red. So I'm going back to my raspberry here. And I'm going to go over it again. But in certain places, I want to push harder now. So I'm going to blend that black. I don't want to color the whole thing in with a, with a, like pushing a lot. Because then it will all go bright red. And I do want these variations of orange that we did to show through. But where I want that shading, I'm putting a lot of pressure on. And what it does is it kind of burnishes those uh, layers of pencil crayon together and makes them flat, but still show all the colors underneath. So I'm gonna burnish this color a little bit and go in a circle there. And as I move away, I lighten the pressure. So I move away, I lighten the pressure so that I don't go too, too red. And you see, I'm not coloring in that direction anymore because I'm going in a circle because I'm just softening the colors together now. So more pressure on the darker spots. There we go. And you can always come back to it and add even more red after if you wanted. So try not to finish the whole, like it, some, you'll see some pencil color artists, they will finish the whole one section here. Like super realism, super high detail, especially portraits and things like that. And uh, it blows me away how they do it. But I can't, I can't color like that. I never, I'm kind of all over because I'm not 100% I'm not sure of myself, so I'm back and forth a lot. I'm gonna go in with the orange, just scrub a little orange in here and, and burnish the whole thing. I'm gonna leave this spot empty because I'm gonna burnish that with the yellow. And I'm just scribbling, kind of moving the thing around in a circle. I'll go back with the yellow now in this spot and burnish. Just push really hard as I'm coloring it in. And you can see the the variation of colors from dark to the light part of the mushroom. All right, I want to also just give those mushrooms a little bit of a gray. Uh, the little dots here, I don't like them stark white, so I have a 30% warm gray Prismacolor pencil, and of course, need sharpening. <laughs> oh, my tea. Is it cold? Sorry, I have some tea. Mm. It's cold. I always do that. I'm just going to add a little bit of gray here just to tone them down. I don't want them bright white. Just tone that down a little. And then I might go in and just push a little harder in a few spots just to kind of indicate some texture to those. Again, not tons of detail, just implied detail. Okay, so I think we'll go back to warming him up a little bit. So I'm going to go into my uh, burnt ochre and just rub now, scrub in a little bit of this and warm him up. So I'm putting a little bit more pressure on now. So I'm softening out my pencil lines. I 
paying attention again, what color everything, what direction everything's moving in. Make sure I get the back of his ear on the other side. Warming up his face a little. I'm pretty happy with him. I'm going to put a tiny bit of that gray into his feet and into the other part of his face that stayed kind of white. A little gray in his tail. I want to put in a little shadow in his tail here where it curves. And maybe just a little shadow underneath. Okay, and then we'll do the mushrooms. So the mushroom I think I will do also in this kind of uh, ready color, this ochre color. So before they do that, I wanna put a little orange in my mushroom, just for fun. I'll throw a little orange in there. I mean, you can even put a little orange in him. Why not? And then Oops, I forgot the other side here. Put a little bit in here. And then I'm going to burnish with this. This ochre color. Where are we getting underneath the detail here? And he's come to life. I think I will add a little bit of white for his eye, though. I feel like he needs that. And I went overboard. I covered his whole eye. Any more details you can just pull out that you might want to show. Maybe you want to define his feet a little more. Go ahead and define them a bit more. A little more shading on and underneath his tail if you want. And then of course he gets these little whiskers. So you can just rub a little bit of black in here or brown and then just gently, carefully pull away. And then he's got some peeking through the other side of his face. Okay, let's see if I can find that pen. Uh, I know I have them. I have this one. The point on this might be a little bit big. So I have to be real careful. So a Posca pen is an acrylic marker and they're great because they're opaque. So they'll sit right on top and I just want to give him a dot on his eye just to just to bring him back a little bit and maybe just darken around that circle. Whoops. Just bring out his eye a little bit more, make that dot a little bit smaller. I find his eye, the eyes are pretty important. Usually I keep them brown. I went a little black on him. It's okay. No big deal. All right. So there he is. There's our little our little guy. I hope you like that tutorial. I hope it gave you some ideas and some inspiration and again just pick up whatever you have and have fun drawing and playing. And uh really just experiment with things. And hopefully follow some of those little details I gave you that will hopefully create an illusion of a little bit more three dimension, a little bit more realism, especially in the fur, because you can draw, once you've nailed fur, you can draw any kind of animal, really. Just have fun with it. So a little guy on a mushroom. There you go, guys. Hope you like that. And if you do, um, hit the like button and I hope to uh, see you again soon. I'll just do a little close up here. In case I was too far away. So that's one we did today. And that's the uh, original. All right. Take care, everyone. Have a great day. Bye.